Hey everybody, welcome back to another fantastic episode of Ready to Die Fighting. I'm Chris. It's a gorgeous day out. And uh, I figured this was probably a good time to show you guys my weather station that I built for me and the boy to learn about, about the weather, be able to track the weather, and ideally be even able to predict the weather without needing the internet or uh, TV or anything, any time the electronics, just be able to do it on our own. And honestly, you know, we, I can't give like a two week day out forecast, but we have been pretty accurate within like maybe a day or two, most of the time. You know, every now and then I've been wrong, but pretty good track record, honestly. So before I go explaining how we do that, let me just go through what it consists of all the different tools so here I have I took a five gallon bucket and just filled it with um, I think paver sand or something like that some kind of sand I don't remember what type just a cheap bag of sand and then I got two two by fours which I just had extra um, and I nailed them together to make a nice stable post here and we've had some windy days it has not gotten knocked down or anything um, and then attached to that is this um, telescopic pole that is very flexible. You see that it very easily just bounces all over the place and at the top of it is a airport style windsock. No wind right now, but it moves around, it's fun. And then this is a rain gauge and there's a few different kinds that you can buy you can get the ones like at um, I don't know your Home Depot and Lowe's and some of the department stores and stuff Walmart and all that but this is the kind that they use more professionally and if you're in um, Aries or um, Storm was it Storm Watchers I think Storm Watch can't remember the name of the group but I did like a weather training with that this is the kind that they or the style that they recommend uh, and attached on the swivel here is a um, basic thermometer and it also has a humidity um, was a hygrometer as well and then I just kind of attached a inexpensive compass so we could just quickly tell which way the wind is coming from and all that and then for the more sensitive devices that I don't like to leave outside, I have a, apparently a delicious anemometer and that measures wind speed. And despite the fact that Chala chewed it up, it actually still works. So I guess I can say that I recommend this. Very durable. It's made by Hold Peak, whoever they are. And then the last thing is a barometer and this is just an inexpensive fishing barometer um, but it does the job and then you know what I guess the actual last thing is you want to be able to track the weather you're gonna need something to write it down with and so I'll show you my little notebook uh, so right in the rain outdoor journal there's some cats getting into some trouble over there and so we just write down the date, the temperature. Chala. No. No. Um, keep track of temperature, humidity, uh, how many inches of precipitation, what the air pressure is, the wind, and then I usually make some notes about the day, what kind of clouds we see, and Nate will usually like to draw a picture of what the sky looks like. And so, you know, at first we were doing this daily and we we're pretty good about it for maybe a month or so. But you know how things go. We live in life and things start to fall by the wayside. And so I was slacking off. Um, but now, let's see, let me fast forward to uh, today and we'll go ahead and fill this in and I will um, walk you through how I do that. So the first thing I usually check, which is the quickest and easiest, is the temperature. 
And so looking at my page here, it says it is, I'm thinking that even though it's called Accurite, that doesn't feel right to me. Being in direct sun does make a big difference, I've noticed on these guys, which is why it's kind of nice to have the swivel. I can kind of turn it maybe away from the sun. So maybe I'll give that a little bit and come back to it. But the humidity is probably accurate. So the humidity, it's saying that it's very dry. Um, I would say that's about 15%. But yeah, I, I don't believe that it is. It looks like it dropped some. Now it's saying 94. Um, so yeah, let's let's come back to that. Uh, now the last few days we've had no rain whatsoever. The skies have been completely clear, like not a cloud at all. But it rained all day long, Friday, and so I knew I was going to be making this video over the weekend. So I didn't empty the rain gauge out so that you guys could see how that worked. So it's basically got this funnel. Like that. And that's the top and the rain catches in here and funnels into this graduated tube or cylinder. And when I say, I mean, it tells you all this, these, um, do the, you know, fractions of an inch. So that's one inch, and there's a half of an inch of rain, um, and so on. And so what you do, it's kind of a, if there's only a little bit of rain, if you only got 0 0.3 inches of rain, whatever, no big deal. If it's more than that, you have to pour it into here, and it just slides off, so it just mounted on with, uh, what was that, three screws with this plate, and you just kind of wedge it in there. It's got the grooves, so not difficult. But then you want to carefully pour up to one inch, and then you know that's one inch of water. So I'm just going to go over here. And pour that in, and try not to spill any. Um, so I'd say that's about one inch. There is some debris in there, and that's probably going to screw with it to some, but eh. Let's say that's one inch. I'm just going to dump that out. Fill it up again. And I'd say that was, um, so you got 0 0.1, 1, 5, 1, 6, 1, 7. I'm going to say that we got 1.17 inches of rain on Friday. And then just put it back in. I should probably rinse it out, try to get some of that gunk out. Looks like some algae or something. But whatever. And it just kind of balances there, and then once you put the funnel back on that pulls it in place and it doesn't move and that's it and so now we can start over and now I'm gonna write down precipitation we got 1.17 inches oh which that was from Friday ah, I'll just put in parentheses Friday okay so then looking at the uh, wind sock that tells us the direction that the wind is blowing so if normally the wind is usually blowing kind of this way and so the narrow end points to the direction that the wind is going um, but it you know it could be anything and so I usually just try to watch it for a little while because it comes in gusts and it may change directions especially because it's basically in between a bunch of trees and houses and all that and wind can kind of slow around a bit 
but um, I typically look at this, but I also look at the clouds, if there are any, what general direction are they moving in? And then I can use my compass and really kind of narrow it in if I wanted to be really specific, but I usually just go with a general north, northeast, south, whatever the case may be. So I would say the wind is blowing not very hard at all. <laughs> We're really not getting much wind. But the anemometer, that's what this boy tells us. So I just push the power button and it shows us miles per hour. You can change the units, meters per second, kilometers an hour. Wow, so it's saying it's 25.7 degrees Celsius. That is um, not 90 something but it's fairly warm it's probably what like in the 80s low 80s and so you see as it spins it gives you we got some kilometers an hour and you can change a few different modes um so you can show like the minimum and max speeds um or either the average speed so another way i can get direction if i really can't tell from that um basically i just hold this up and turn to where it seems to go blow the best and I get the highest speed and that kind of lets me know which direction the wind is actually coming from. So that's uh, yeah, which one is going to be. So we're looking at uh, 1.2 point, 2.5, looks like about 2.5 miles per hour there. Was the highest that I've seen so far. Well, let's just go with that, and that's going that way. Yeah, we got 2.2. Yeah. So for wind, just writing down 2.2 miles per hour, and it's going roughly from the west towards the east as it usually does. Now the last thing, and probably the most useful as far as predicting weather. Now these things will all tell you what's happening right now, but the one that really gives me the best idea of what's going to happen or what's not gonna happen is the barometer. So air pressure is really what makes and breaks storms. If the air pressure is high, you're not gonna get any real weather. It's gonna be a nice, clear, sunny day, no clouds if you've got high air pressure because the air pressure is basically the weight of the air pressing down on us. So if the air pressure is high and there's a lot of pressure pushing down, it's pushing all the air down, it's pushing the moisture down. Clouds can't form. Clouds are formed and weather is formed by moisture evaporating and going up. If it can't go up, we can't get clouds, we can't get rain. So I shouldn't say can't, there's probably some exception or something, but generally speaking, that's a good rule of thumb. However, when you have low pressure, that means that the air is rising, the moisture is rising, and clouds can form. And the lower that pressure is, the more severe the weather you're gonna get. So with really low, air pressure, um, depending on where you live, that can mean hurricanes, that can mean those big supercell thunderstorms, potentially tornadoes and whatever else. So low pressure is the one that you got to worry about. High pressure, you're fine. So this is a fishing barometer. And so it's kind of got these um, different color indicators that tell you like when it's a good time to fish, when it's a bad time to fish. Eh, you know, whatever. We kind of use that as a ballpark. It still does tell you um, whatever's low or high. And you've got two needles. One is gold, and that one I can move independently. The red one is the one that actually does the reading. Uh, now, when you first get your barometer, you need to calibrate it because air pressure is very much dependent on altitude. And wherever they manufacture this, good chance that it's not the same altitude as me. So you want to calibrate this thing to your location exactly as you can. There should be a screw on the back. Take a little screwdriver, twist that around, get it 
to um, go to a known source, known source such as um, I use weather.gov, the National Weather Service. Type in the zip code and you can get accurate air pressure and all this other weather information and they have like a three day history and, and they update it like every, like every hour at least. Um, so I looked at this right beforehand and the air pressure as of about 20 minutes ago was 30.31 inches or 1026.3 millibars. So if I wanted to, what did I say? 30.31. So there is 30. Um, and so actually it looks like this is a little bit low according to, uh, based off of, um, um, the National Weather Service. And so if you bump these around a bit, or if you change altitude, you're going to have to recalibrate. And so I actually did bang this around a little bit earlier. So this is another reason why this is good. So I'm just going to take uh, this little screwdriver and move this dial until it says 30.31. So if you notice, there's not a huge range here you know the middle point is about 30 and most of the time it is right around here I've never seen it get up to 31 I've never seen it get down to 29 um, but at the same time I haven't I've only been tracking for a few months now uh, so I'm gonna get this up to 30.31 just by turning the little dial there So now it is recalibrated for this area. Like I said, do that every time you change altitude, every time this gets knocked around, or just every time you feel like checking on the, um, the weather service. That'll uh, help you make sure it's accurate. And so we've got pretty high air pressure right now. And what do you know? Nice. Well, actually we got some clouds rolling in. That way the clouds, the sky is still pretty clear. This way we've got clouds rolling in. So I'll discuss that in a little bit. But let me just write that down. Um, so yeah, so I already have that. Precipitate temperature. I'm gonna put down, what's this thing say? Did we, did it cool down? Oh yeah, now it dropped down to, it's at about 84. And that sounds about right because the uh, other one was saying 25 Celsius, although now it's been sitting in the sun, <laughs> directly in the sun, and it says 34.9 Celsius. So you gotta watch it with these thermometers. The sun will screw them up. But I'll go with 84. That sounds pretty good. That feels about right to me as well. And so then I usually just make a few notes about, all right, so clear skies early in the day, um, and we've got, looks like kind of like a stratus cloud moving in from the west and it actually seems to be more they're not moving very fast but just the way it's shaped if you guys can see that there seems to be more clouds well maybe not necessarily but they're definitely coming from the west i was going to say it looks like they might be coming maybe from the northwest more so than just west but I'd have to watch a little bit longer, and they're, and they're not moving very fast at all. So, I'm going to write here, slow moving clouds. And they're kind of a stratus -y cloud, but there's also like some, maybe some alto cumulus mixed in there. Kind of, you have a few different types of clouds, and they all kind of mix together and make different subgroups of clouds and sometimes you look at the sky and there's a bunch of different types of clouds all at once sometimes they converge so to me reading the clouds accurately is a little bit difficult but I'm familiar with them enough at this point where I can kind of get a rough idea about what they're gonna predict or what they're telling me um, and so slow moving stratus clouds Um, from west.
So, based on this information, what can I deduce? So the last two days we had clear skies. Um, like yesterday, there wasn't a single cloud in the sky all day long. Um, maybe there was a couple little cirrus clouds. And cirrus clouds are the thin, wispy ones. They kind of look like horse manes or feathers. They're um, just very, very thin. And they're actually made out of little, tiny little ice crystals and they're super way up high. Um, at the very top of the lower layer of the atmosphere. And those are a good indicator that change is a coming. You're not gonna get rain from them, you're not gonna get snow from them, but they are an indicator that some sort of front, some sort of weather change is coming. So either a, a cold front or a warm front is coming, but you know, it's not an immediate threat. If I'm out hiking or if I'm lost in the woods or I've got something I know I gotta do and I don't have access to this stuff and the sky is clear and all I see is like some cirrus clouds, I'm gonna have a pretty high degree of confidence that like, okay, you know, any work we need to do outside, let's do it today, tomorrow, maybe even the next day. We probably got two to three days where we shouldn't have any rain doesn't tell me much about temperature necessarily you know it could get freezing cold later on or whatever but I can say with a pretty high degree of confidence at this point probably not gonna get a whole lot of rain or any um, now stratus clouds that's kind of like the big blanket of clouds that we kind of sort of see here this isn't the best example of them but they're low laying they're usually dark and gray like the overcast um, that's a sign of a warm front that has come in typically. Warm fronts aren't that bad. Stratus clouds, atlocetus clouds, these big blankety type clouds, they'll rain for a long time, but you typically won't have thunder and lightning, uh, tornadoes, um, anything like that. They're just, you're just going to get that long, boring, all day drizzle. If you see that, you're going to have rain. Good chance, you may have it all day, or at least for a few hours. It's not going anywhere anytime soon. Don't make any plans to go outside if you see those. Cumulus clouds are the ones that are dangerous ones. There's fair weather cumulus clouds where, you know, like little cotton balls, they're cute and fluffy. They're the ones we always like to draw. They got a flat bottom and kind of look like that. That's a cumulus cloud. Those can be very happy and nice, but they have the capability to turn into absolute monsters and these are where the dangerous guys come in when they become cumulonimbus cows when you if you can visually see these things um oh the clouds move while i was talking it's slow but uh it appears to be that they are moving east southeast which means that it's coming from the north the north is typically cold air the south is typically warm air. So, good chance that it's actually a cold front moving in. Cold fronts are more dangerous. Cold fronts bring cumulus clouds. Cold fronts can bring extreme weather. Thunder clouds, lightning, hurricanes, you know, all that stuff. So that's what you need to watch out for. That's danger sign. Looking at these clouds right now, looking at our high air pressure, and just how dry it is, I'm going to say we're probably not going to get rain today. Um, that's my guess. Probably not going to rain today. I would say tomorrow is entirely possible. Um, but kind of keep monitoring, seeing what happens. So this book, right here, Everything Kid Weather Book, is actually does a very nice job of explaining what a lot of things are and what they mean and what i really like it is even has some um let's see it even had like a, i think it was like a prepper checklist of what to do if there's a that might have been a different book but um but yeah it's got all that type of stuff it's got some games and it does a pretty good job of explaining what some of the stuff is and so here we have low pressure systems and high pressure systems um Low pressure, that's where bad stuff happens. Uh, low pressure is you're going to get the storms and, and all that. The high pressure systems, nothing really happens with those. 
Uh, so this gives you an idea, and this, these these are fronts, so that tells you where it it ends. So on this side of it is low, and on that side is high, and where those two pressure systems come together, that's where chaos ensues. Um, you know, sometimes one will overtake the other, sometimes they'll bump into each other and stay there. So a lot of different things can happen. So depending on how they meet and where they meet and the conditions and which direction they're moving, there's so many different variables. You can have a lot of different stuff happening. Where you're probably not having anything happening is the in-betweens. <laughs> So, I mean, maybe you got in this low pressure area, you might have some rain or whatever. It might not be a big deal. There's probably nothing but sunny skies here. But as this moves um, that way, we're going to be getting a lot of storms along here. And this book explains that sort of stuff. Um, and so, yeah, I, I like it. So it's good for kids, but it also breaks down really easily for adults check that out there's quite a few YouTube channels um, videos that I was able to find anything you can find from the National Weather Service I would recommend um, or groups like that I may get all my notes together and make a video specifically on this topic of how to predict the weather from the clouds because I really did I, I struggled to find like one video that explained it all um, I kind of had to piece together and like really scrounge around and find 50 different videos and I think two different books and just being outside and paying attention and making notes to start to figure this thing out. Um, it's getting cloudier, but I, I stand by my opinion of no rain today. Um, so yeah, so I think I will make more videos on the weather just because I do like doing this. Um, makes me feel like a scientist. Uh, I think I have, I definitely have one, I think I have two scientist friends, and I can't remember if one of them told me this, or if um, maybe I saw it on like a PBS kids thing or something, but they said uh, everybody can be a scientist. You know, it's, it's not a title, it's a, it's a mindset. You know, all you need is a curious mind, and you want a, a desire to have a better understanding of your world, and you can be a scientist. So... <laughs> Here I am with my little science kit, and uh, it's it's fun. You know, we skip some days here and there, especially if nothing's happening. But um, for the most part, I try to keep an eye on what's happening out here. Every time we come outside, kind of just kind of take a look at it. Uh, this stays hung up in the house. Um, I wish I had like a nicer, fancier one that was like decorative and all that, but they're too expensive and hard to find. So I just hang this up on a hook and every time I walk by it, I look at it. Oh, I forgot one thing. You're supposed to use that so you can keep track. The atmospheric pressure changes is the big thing. So right now it's high. If we got, if I came back an hour later and this red dial had dropped down significantly, I would be very concerned. A sudden drop means bad weather. If it's slowly dropping over the course of the day or two, that means, you know, bad weather probably is coming, but it's probably not gonna be that bad. It'll probably just be rain or whatever. Uh, slow increase means weather's gonna be getting better. Fast increase, <laughs> you know, I've, I don't know if I've seen like a real fast increase, but I assume weather's clearing up and you got a nice day ahead of you. So that's the one that I really watch the most for predicting and also just the clouds themselves. I am gonna do more on this because I think it's fun. If you wanna see that, like and subscribe, hit that notification bell, and that way you know when I post that video. Have a good day and I'll see you guys in the next video.